Minions assemble. Yeah. I want to say it works. Minions assemble. Does it work? <laughs> yes, it works. Okay. I don't know if that worked actually. We do assemble. There's seeds. Okay, nice seeds. Oh, excellent. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones, and exalted those of humble estates. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Today is a little different because what is today? Easter. Good job. <laughs> Maybe y'all are gonna get it right. So I, I love this thing. I, I built this little thing. I want you to see. You've got to guess what it is, though. I actually needed the steps to afford this, but it's okay. A cross. Good job, the cross. <laughs> I like it. Y'all okay, y'all should stay here. Today is a little different because it's Sunday, so it is the resurrection. Every first day of the week is the resurrection, right? But it's also something special. It's also Christmas. And what we're going to look at today is the different responses. We have different songs. In the New Testament, you don't have a lot of songs. It's kind of sad. But you do have four songs in Luke 1 and 2. So today we're going to have four different readings, four different readings of the song. And we're going to start with Shape. It's okay, Caleb. I know you're not Shape, but... You can even have to stand on the stool. But it looks cool if you do. Your S for Shape. Bless the Lord God of Israel, for the, he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant that oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand line enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you child will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare His ways, to give knowledge of salvation to His people, in the forgiveness of our, their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sun rise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadows of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. We have Mary's response, which is very first reading. We have a secondary response, which is what word did I put in? I put Zachariah second. Good. Zachariah, and then I had Simeon's response, and all of their responses were the same. And here's the answer: No matter what you're celebrating today, because I understand some people 
old school, new school, brand new school, it's Sunday, it's the resurrection. Some people old school, really old school, today is Christmas. And either way you do it, you have the exact same response. You have Mary's response of just overwhelming joy, Zachariah's response of overwhelming joy, and Simeon's like, I'm ready to die, it's so good right now. But there's one more response, and it's the heavenly answer. <clears throat> You're out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. It's a fun way to look at it. Because it's four different people responding, and that was the heavenly answer. The heavenly answer was, everybody needs to rejoice. Everybody is called to rejoicing in it. That's the invitation. But we have to go beyond the concerns and the worries and the cares and the presents and the commercials and the disputes and everything else and remember what's really important. Because I hate to tell you, if this is Easter, Pascha, if this is our celebration of Christ being risen from the dead, we should be rejoice. Joyce. <laughs> joyful, joyful, rejoice, right? Any other but, let's twist it. Let's say it's Christmas. We should be rejoicing. Okay. So generally, we don't really care what the question is. We already know what we need to do in response to it. And it's that. They all sing songs. These are all called songs. Mary's song, Zachariah's song, Simeon's song, and the song of the heavenly host. Because guess what? They all have the same answer. They responded with joy. And that's something if we don't have today, the world will notice. But if we have today, we can make a great difference. And it's not that this day is the only day we should be joyful. It's that today we either remember one of two things. And either way, it's the same exact command. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Rejoice. And so you have this simple answer. Whether we have a lamb that is born, because it's celebrated on this day and has been for thousands of years, or this is the day where the Lamb was sacrificed. Either way, today is a day of joy. Today is a joy, is occasion where we remember Christ the resurrected, or remember Christ the incarnate. But either way, we've got to be joyful about it. We've got songs, and I know they're Christmas songs. Got it. They're joyful songs. They're songs about how excited we are and how joyful we are about what God has done for us. And no matter how you look at it, the only way to mess up this day, completely and totally, is to be worried about everything else, is to be stressed about it, is to be focused on everything else in the world instead of being joyful. And pick your poison. Be joyful either way. Because the history of this is beautiful. Right? Some of us know it. It was a pagan holiday. And we stole it. But I put up two pagan symbols up here. I want you to know this. I don't want you to think I put up one pagan symbol. It's a tree. Therefore, it's pagan somehow. Um, God makes those. I'm not sure how it's pagan. Um, we have a tree. Therefore, pagan. But I want you to know there's two pagan symbols up here today. Anybody? Did y'all know this was a pagan symbol? Y'all didn't know that the cross was actually a pagan symbol that they used to kill, crucify people and kill them? Romans, they were killing people because it was more enjoyable to watch somebody suffer. And then you know what we did with that cross? We stole it! And then we take trees and we steal them too. And the truth is this, we get so caught up in the disputes and all this craziness and we forget that we still have to follow the command. The only command concerning this day is to be joyful. The only command we have is to say, you know what, it may have been pagan and we stole it. Awesome day, we celebrate Christ's birth. Because otherwise you're going to have to throw out everything pagan in Christianity, starting with the one thing that if you throw out, your religion ceases to have any importance. 
cross. Because there's a story in the Bible about why this day is celebrated when it was made. There were these men, I don't really know how many, and they were looking for this child who's going to be born the son, S-U-N, of righteousness. And they were looking for this child, and so what did they do? What did they look for? If they were pagans, what did they look at? The stars. These pagan men looked at stars, followed a pagan star. Star. And they follow the star and they find the Christ child. Paganism converted to Christianity all because stars, paganism, led those who worshiped stars and followed stars to Christ. And the answer is this. In the Magi's we find this. We, no matter what day you care to think it is, this is the day that was chosen in history to remember the birth of Christ. And there's no reason to change it because it has pagan roots. Any more than it is to throw out crosses because they're pagan. And no more pagan than you or me. The greatest pagan in here is who? All of us. We were all separated from God. We were all alienated from God. We were all born once, born to die. We are the greatest example of something pagan becoming something beautiful. And today we remember this Christ child who the whole holiday started out pagan and became Christian. And guess what? That's what we want for all of us. Is us to start out pagan, following our own ways, following the ways of the world, and to be changed completely so that we are no longer of this world. We are not trying to please this world, but we're trying to please God. And we are rejoicing because there is a birth. A birth that is just as important to me that could not have happened without the first one. The birth that we speak of in John 3. Jesus says, you're truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, it means listen. I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. You are invited to the nativity today. You are invited to respond to a birth to be completely born again. As great a miracle as the virgin birth is you going from flesh to flesh and spirit. So that one day we look for that hope where we enter into that rest. That final kingdom of God. That final realization when the kingdom is completely renewed, the swords are taken away and the garden is open again. Today we have an invitation to be born again. Just like that Christ child, to be born. He was from all times, but he was born. We exist, but we need to be reborn. So today if there's anybody who needs to be born again, if there's anybody who needs to respond to God's invitation to be something old, to be made something brand new, to have this beautiful rebirth, we have that invitation today. But if there's anybody who just needs prayers, struggling, suffering, and you can't find the joy because there's too much Satan, there's too much world, there's too much attacking you, and you need the prayers of this church. Or if there's anybody who wishes to submit to the elders, we ask you to come now as we stand and as we sing.